Hi, I'm Jennifer Bourne, and I am happy that you're here because we're talking about something I love today. We're talking about vacations. More specifically, how to take a vacation and detach from your business without freaking out. Today, I've got 11 tips for taking a real vacation from your freelance business without stress or worry or mountains of extra work piling up before you go or waiting for you when you come back. I used to actually hate vacations. Well, okay, not the actual vacation part, but everything else before and after the vacation. And if I'm totally honest, sometimes during the vacation. I know it sounds horrible, but there used to be a time when the idea of a vacation would come up and I would say, I can't go, it's just not worth it. When you're a small business owner, or more specifically, a freelancer, a solopreneur, an entrepreneur, taking a vacation can be extremely difficult, let alone a vacation where you completely detach from your business and actually leave your work at the office. The reality of taking a vacation when you're a freelancer is that the amount of work that ramps up before you go is totally unimaginable by most people. And the work that piles up and waits for you for when you come back causes so much stress that it's hard to explain. The work that you feel compelled to do while you're on vacation makes you feel like taking the vacation was kind of a waste. And if we're honest, it totally frustrates your family as well. The inability to take a vacation or sometimes just an entire weekend off is often because you don't have the support that you need, right? You lack systems in your business. Maybe you're in a phase of your business that requires constant attention because that's the thing as well. And I have experienced all of those things. I went through times in my business where I had no support and I tried to do everything myself. I built my business up to multiple six figures with no systems in place. And when actively launching something new, I needed to be in my business 24 seven. It was rough going and I don't recommend that to anyone. I didn't do it on purpose. I just didn't know any better, but luckily I was able to change things. And I'm sharing these tips today, hoping that you can do the same because you have the ability to eliminate that crazy ramp up before a vacation and establish boundaries while you're gone. And you have the ability to manage the work that's waiting for you when you return. I've taken steps to make big changes in my business to make travel a huge part of my lifestyle. With these changes, I went from working 16 to 18 hour days, seven days a week and almost never taking a vacation to never working nights or weekends and taking nearly nine weeks off every year. It wasn't easy at first and we we started small, right? But now I have a vacation system, specific steps I take to ensure that I can leave my business behind, enjoy myself, and not freak out about it. So here are my best 11 tips for taking a a business vacation, taking a vacation from your business. One, prepare yourself. Prepare yourself mentally to be gone. You need to set aside time before your vacation to prepare, right? Clean up everything, get your affairs in order, and be ready to be gone. Number two, you need to prepare your clients. They need to know well in advance when you're going to be gone, when you're going to be unavailable, and what to do in case of an emergency. Number three, Set reminders, and not just for you, but for your clients too. Remind your clients and yourself that you're going to be out of the office, that your vacation is coming up, right? You can't ever assume the clients are gonna remember your vacation, they're busy too. So about two weeks before your travel, add a big, bold, red reminder with the dates that you will be gone in your email signature so that every time you communicate with them, they see that reminder about you being out of the office. Number four, set deadlines. Give your clients pre-travel deadlines for all requests. This means telling your clients if they want that thing done before you go, they have to get it to you by a certain date. And if you can, make that date in advance of your last day in the office, right? If you are leaving for the vacation on the 21st, tell your clients that they have to get everything to you no later than the 14th. That gives you a week to wrap up everything nice and tidy and clear your plate. Number five, stick to your guns. If you give your clients a deadline, stick to it. You are partners and they need to take responsibility for their actions. Remember, an emergency on their part doesn't constitute an emergency on your part. Number six, stay on top of your workflow, right? You have to stay on top of things. 
the last thing you want is to fall behind and be like trying to catch up all crazy before vacation, pulling an all nighter and starting your vacation exhausted. Right, you also wanna make sure that you don't promise too many people too many things before you go. Number seven, leverage email automation. Set up an autoresponder for your email address while you're gone so that anybody who emails you will get a message back letting them know that you're out of the office, who to contact if it's an emergency, and when you'll be back. Number eight, keep track of that post travel or post-vacation workflow. Managing your workflow when you get back from vacation is where most people get tripped up. They plan and plan and plan before, but they don't plan for anything when they get back. It makes coming home from vacation kind of an awful experience. So keep track of all your projects, the ones that you're delaying, new projects that aren't gonna be starting until you get back, and all of the meetings and phone calls and things that have been scheduled. If you can, tip number nine is plan an extra pre-day. Tell everybody, tell your clients, tell your friends, tell your family that you're leaving for vacation a day earlier than you actually are. So you have one quiet and uninterrupted day to get all the last minute things done that you need to get done. It's one day of peace to close things out really nicely. And along those same veins, tip 10 is to plan at least two days at the end of your vacation to rediscover your groove. The worst experience is coming home from vacation and having to put in a full day's work the next day. The hardest experience after that is to only have one day off between your vacation and getting back to work. At minimum, I try to schedule two free days at the end of each trip. It doesn't always happen that way, but that's what I shoot for. Two days at the end of my vacation allows me to really find my groove and get back into my normal productive daily grind. Because the first day, I just spend regrouping, unpacking, and being at home, getting all the little things I wanna get done around the house, and kind of sitting on the couch and watching Netflix because I'm usually exhausted, right? Then the second day, I check my email, I revisit where my projects are at, I get reacquainted with my business, I kind of open up projects and see what work I have coming up. When possible, I add a third day, it's a secret work day. It's a day that I am back in the office and I am working full the full day, but everybody else doesn't think I'm in the office till the next day. And it gives me that one day to kind of get ahead and get ahead and jump on things. That way I can feel really confident about my work. And my last tip is to accept who you are and who you're not. As much as I advocate for vacations away from work, that's not checking email, not checking phone calls, not checking Slack, no client work, no computers, I understand that the act of completely detaching from your business may cause so much stress that it actually negatively impacts your mental health instead of being a positive thing. So you have to know what you need to be able to turn it off and honor that. For example, I can shut things off, ignore them, and be perfectly fine, but my husband can't do that. And for 10 years, he was my business partner. So we would go on vacation and I'm like, peace out suckers, I'll see you when I get back. But Brian couldn't relax during the day unless he checked in with things. So while we were showering and getting ready in the morning, he would have his coffee and check email, check in our project management system, just make sure everything's going fine. And then he would close it and we'd be out on our day. And it allowed him to relax all day long. And then when we get back at the hotel at night, he'd open it up just to make sure nothing major happened, right? There was no emergencies he needed to deal with. And he needed those two check-ins to be able to detach during the day. So you need to know what works best for you and what practices you can put in place to help you truly relax while you're on vacation. Take time detached from your business where you're not checking email or phone or on your computer or during client work. Those are my 11 simple tips to help you Plan a vacation when you own a freelance business to detach from your business and be stress-free, worry-free, and freak-out-free. 
Again, I'm Jennifer Bourne, and thanks for being here. You can find more details on the tips that I shared in the blog post, uh, and by subscribing, you will get all new content from me as well. Thanks again for being here, and until next time, I hope you have a great day.